But anyway, um, one last thing I wanted to do was look at the Hellblade feature, um, which essentially kind of gives you a breakdown of the story and kind of what's to come in number two. So. Stormy seas and lost souls. Who is it? She's dreamt of this before. It's coming. They say dreams are visions of our memories, thoughts, and fears, as seen by our inner eye. But what if each one of us is always dreaming, even when awake? And we only see what our inner eye creates for us. Is this what hell is? world shaped by Senua's nightmares. Maybe that's why people fear seeing the world through our eyes. Because if you believe that Senua's reality is twisted, you must accept that yours might be too. Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice is a video game about Senua, a Celtic warrior on a vision quest into Viking territory. But what sets our hero Senua apart is that she suffers from severe psychotic mental illness. The original idea for Hellblade was to create a classic hero's journey, a journey of suffering, but one where the fantasy world is not another planet or alternate universe, but a world that is constructed in Senua's mind. But to do so would mean putting psychotic mental illness at the center of the experience, a subject that is still considered taboo, and a challenge that was both terrifying and exciting in equal measure. In Hellblade, the starting point was a newly discovered Celtic goddess called Senuna in Ashwell, Hertfordshire. When first discovered, her name was thought to be Senua, a name which I liked and kept. I wondered if Senua might have been a Celtic warrior like Boudicca, who stood up to the Romans. While the Romans had conquered all of Europe, there was a group of Celts up in the furthest reaches of the Roman Empire that could not be conquered, the Picts. And so the Romans built a wall, called Hadrian's Wall, that spans across Britain from sea to sea to keep the Pictish barbarians at bay. The Picts were known for their war paint, painted on with woad, and their matted hair clumped with lime. And so Senua would be a barbarian Pict in this image. What's your name? Senua. I haven't seen you before. I don't live home much. Oh, Zeno's daughter. I have to go. Wait! Orkney is off the coast of Scotland and was inhabited by the Picts, steeped in history and mystery. And so I made Orkney Senua's home and set the stage for a crisis. In the late 8th century, the first Vikings landed on the Orkney Islands. The population of the Picts crashed thereafter, replaced by the Norsemen of the 9th century. Were they wiped out? We don't know for sure, but it would seem likely given the reputation of the Vikings. The Northmen's brutality is legendary. High-ranking leaders and chieftains of the tribes they conquered were often offered as sacrifice to their gods. The most brutal of these sacrifices was known as the Blood Eagle. I imagine Senua as a young female warrior who returns home from exile to find her partner, Dillian, brutally sacrificed to a Norse god by these hellish warriors from a faraway land. I imagine the horror of this moment and how it would have dragged her deep into mental torment. I came to learn that the Celts had a sophisticated and nuanced perspective on the nature of mental disorder. One term they used was gelt, 
A Gelt is a man or woman who has been driven mad by a curse, battle trauma or grief. The Gelt would take to a life in the woods in search of penance, punishment and purgation. And so Senua became a Gelt, cursed by darkness, looking for redemption in the wilds. Another word the Celts used in reference to mental disorders was truth, meaning fool, or Liar. one who utters the words of God. They tell of the mad sinner who flees battle into exile and takes on a beastly nature, growing feathers on his body. The character called Truth in Hellblade is based on a little-known person called Findan, an 8th century Irish Celt who was captured and enslaved by the Vikings, but eventually escaped to Orkney where he became a monk. I will tell you my stories of hell, if I may walk with you. Upon meeting Senua, it would be his stories that fuel her quest deep into their world of gods. The Northmen say the world will come to an end. The sun will grow black, the earth will sink into the sea, the stars will disappear, fire and water will meet, flames will play against the sky, the heavens and earth and all the world will be burned, all the gods will be dead, and the warriors of Valhalla and people everywhere. For it is nigh. So the stage was set for a new adventure, a journey into the Norse underworld called Hell, a vision quest fueled by madness and myth, a fantasy that was created by Senua's own mind, and one that we would experience through her eyes. This is your mission. This is your quest. There is nothing else left. To make a game about a warrior with psychotic mental illness as its central theme was fraught with danger. Mental illness, such as psychosis, is still taboo and rarely acknowledged in a century of cinema, never mind the new medium of games. Where it does feature, it often conflates psychosis and psychopathy associated with a lack of empathy. It is unfortunate that these two words sound so similar that they are used interchangeably in media. I must admit that I didn't have to look very far to discover my own ignorance of the subject. So we reached out to Paul Fletcher, psychiatrist and professor of health neuroscience at University of Cambridge. Psychosis is a descriptive term and it refers to um, having a loss of contact with objective reality. So it's characterized by uh, two main sets of symptoms. One of them is hallucinations where somebody experiences perceptions when there is no actual objective thing out there to perceive. You're already dead. Who are you? And the other is delusions where somebody comes to very often bizarre, unpleasant, frightening beliefs when there's no good evidence in favour of them. There's no doubt about it. The source of the darkness is in Helheim. And the goddess Hela holds his soul there. We reached out to Welcome, a biomedical research charity that spends billions on research and awareness programmes aimed at improving health. Mental health hasn't always been presented in the media in a way that is particularly helpful. Um, it can be challenging to engage people with the subject matter and there are a lot of preconceived ideas about mental health and particularly schizophrenia and psychosis. So we hope our support allows the team to continue to collaborate with Paul Fletcher and with those who have experience of psychosis to create a game that provides a fresh perspective on the condition and allows audiences to engage with it in a way that just wouldn't be possible in any other medium. What started out as a brief consultation convinced me that we were only scratching the surface of an immensely deep and interesting subject that could enrich and change the very nature of the game. That's cool, thanks so much for coming in. Yeah. Pleasure, thanks. Pleasure. Uh, it's really interesting for me and I'd love to be involved. I think it's fascinating. Yeah. Absolutely. Our understanding of psychosis is still very much a mystery and ways of treating it are still primitive compared to physical illness. After all, it is easy to see the pain and suffering caused by physical diseases or physical trauma. It is not so easy to see the mental suffering and trauma of severe mental illness. But what if we could find a way to see it? Games are capable of drawing you in for hours on end, playing the role of a character who is different from you, experiencing their perspective, and actively involving you in a world that functions with a different set of rules. If we were to represent Senua psychosis, we would have to simulate voice hearing, a common attribute. But how can we simulate something we have no first-hand experience of? Professor Charles Fernieho, a leading expert in voice hearing from Durham University, offered his help. 
Hearing voices is an experience that is usually associated with severe mental illness and crucially we know that hearing voices is a part of ordinary life for many people who don't meet the criteria for mental illness. Yeah, yeah. oh that's, that's not him in real life. We know voices vary according to where they appear in space. Voices can appear far away in the distance, they can appear right there in your ear, they can seem to be coming from inside your head. Based on the information Professor Fernie Ho provided, I put together a sound brief and invited some actors to the studio. We recorded the actors using a binaural microphone, which records the 3D spatial position of sound, replicating the way sound is heard by human ears. It gives you an incredible sense that the person you are listening to is right there beside you. Rachel Waddingham from The Voice Collective came to our studio with two young voice hearers to speak to our team. We talked at length about their experiences and they listened to our tests, giving us feedback on how we could improve on it. Everyone hates her. She's cursed. It's very hard to represent what this experience is like, partly because it's such a personal, intense, emotional experience. It's testament to how ninja theory have been listening to what the researchers are saying, but also crucially listening to the experts by experience. What they've come up with is so compelling. It's by far the best representation I've heard of what these experiences are like. Other common attributes of psychosis are visions and flashbacks. We met with Recovery College East, who work with and care for people recovering from severe mental disorders. A group of service users gave us their first-hand account of what they experience. Sometimes when the, the vision is, or the, what we're seeing is too much, we become smaller until eventually we don't see anything. The people we spoke to, the stories they told, were fascinating, harrowing and mind-boggling. The reality of what people experienced was vivid, far exceeding what I could possibly have imagined. We went away itching to represent some of these visions and flashbacks in the game. As we all know, my heart is so, love is so far away. Don't you know how I want to feel deeper? I could never know how you grow all these days are killing me. Now I see deep in me insanity that sun falls I just want to feel, I just want to feel deeper, deeper I just want to feel, I just want to feel deeper To refine our work, we continue to hold meetings with Recovery College East over the course of a year and a half, showing them what we had achieved so far and refining the in-game representations based on their feedback. With their help, flashbacks, visions and changes in perception were woven into the story and gameplay of Senua. The students that are involved in this project are incredibly excited about being involved. They have described the experience as being important because it values their lived experience and shows that despite what we have been through, all of that experience becomes valid, that actually um, it's something that we should all be talking about. The experiences described range from beautiful to frightening beyond comprehension. I heard of a girl who has to live with an angry voice screaming at her, slamming on her doors and walls 24 hours a day. I met someone who would often see hanging corpses in a room, so real that she would sometimes try to rescue them. The panic and fear that comes with such visions is entirely understandable and it can be a living horror for some. Worthless. 
weak, pathetic. <laughs> Go on, feel sorry for yourself because there is no one left to do that for you. I was urged by one fellow that we should not shy away from showing this horror, and so I was perpetually torn in making Hellblade. Had we gone too far with our representations or not far enough? Broken and lost. Just Do like it. your sword. Come on. In some ways, voice hearing and visions were the low-hanging fruit, so to speak. There's another aspect of psychosis that is much harder to explain, but one that I think video games are uniquely able to represent, which are often called delusions. People begin to see patterns in the world. They begin to link things that most people wouldn't link. Most of the things that we might think would be coincidence or, you know, not worth commenting on. Nevertheless, that might have a particular salience or importance for them. One individual described how everyday words, sounds, colours and objects were steeped in meaning to him, forming a strange and sinister puzzle that he was determined to solve but could not quite get to the bottom of. It's not just brain dysfunction. It's not. It's not like the system shut down. It's actually an incredibly creative process. The person creates a world populated with voices and phantasms and terrors, and they're completely immersed in it. They believe in it. We often invite people into the studio to play the game. In one of our playtests, they played through much of the game, making associations between runes, secret messages, and the threat of darkness that stalked them. There are many things that happen in the world of Hellblade that make perfect sense within the context of Senua's mind. The dark rot that's killing her slowly from within, the secret runes of the gods that block her path to Helheim, and strange associations that exist in the game to confuse you. To complete Senua's quest, you have to internalize and accept the logic and meaning behind these things to progress. Afterwards they said that they didn't see much evidence of mental illness in the game. People with delusions of all sorts would argue the same thing that they are not aware of their experience being abnormal in any way. I need this sword. It's important. Representing perception changes and thinking patterns within Hellblade gives us a set of symptoms common in psychosis. But people with lived experience were keen to emphasize another point, that it is wrong to define a person by their symptoms. Quite often, the illness comes not from the symptoms, but from the stigma, isolation and mistreatment that comes about from the rest of society. They say that I'm cursed. What if they're right? I needed someone to portray Senua, someone who could believably internalize her suffering. <laughs> Melina Jurgens, our video editor, had been a stand in for Senua over a few months while we perfected our motion capture techniques. Without realizing it, she had already auditioned for the role, and I knew her well enough to know that I didn't have to teach her to act, but to relive her own internal pain. As often is the case, those who have suffered mental anguish are never far from us. My hope is that by creating a compelling and aspirational character in Senua who feels very much real, albeit in a fantasy setting, we can provide a lens into her reality, a different one to yours, and this is where storytelling comes into play. I imagined her life based on common threads in real people's lives. She was always prone to psychosis as a child. Her mother Galena also heard voices and had visions, so perhaps there was a genetic aspect. Or perhaps it was cultural as she lived within a world without science, of gods and superstition, as exemplified by her druid father Zimbal. Psychosis developed in her late teens to early twenties and was exasperated by stigma and isolation at the hands of the clansmen and her father. This darkness, it's spreading. The trauma of seeing her lover Dillian sacrifice tips her over the edge, making her remodel her reality around a concept that connects everything. The darkness. So the question, is what Senua experiences real? Can only be answered by saying, yes, it is real. It is her reality. All of her suffering will have been for nothing. It's just a matter of time. Towards the end of the project, service users and professionals that had collaborated with us were invited to see the near final game. 
It was a chance to see if the game had reflected their views or if it had misrepresented them. For me, being involved in especially developing Senua's character has been really important and being able to bring in my perspective and, and what I see and what I hear and having that built into the game has been a real privilege. It's gritty and it's meaty and there are some tough subjects in there that are being tackled with honesty. I was blown away by it today, absolutely blown away. It was just fantastic to get the opportunity to use our lived experience in a very creative way. There's nothing tokenistic about the work we've put in. It feels like we've, we've been listened to, um, things have been taken on board, and I think there was a lot of realism in the, in the game itself, and it feels very authentic. Hellblade will give people a good experience of what it's like to hear voices and, and have those experiences. I'm glad that um, the guys at Ninja Theory kind of asked us to come along and, and help help them build an experience that's positive when it comes out and get myself a copy and have a go. I think all the way through I was really inspired by how the conversations have translated into the game in a way that I think I didn't imagine was possible, so wonderful, really wonderful. I really hope that others will follow the lead they've set and use the power of something like a video game to change people's perceptions, to increase understanding and ultimately to make some of the stigma around voice hearing and other experiences go away. For me it was really exciting to see um, something that I explore scientifically being represented so beautifully in a character who's trying to penetrate the, the mysteries of the environment in which they've been placed with all of this strange uncertainty and noise and, and conflicting information that they're getting. I'm very excited by this way of trying to represent mental illness because I, th I think it actually might be offering us insights that we wouldn't get from you know, pure scientific explorations and actually giving us quite an empathic view of what it might be like. Mental illness has been with us for as long as we have been on this planet, but why? Why has an evolution stamped out this weakness from within our gene pool? I often pondered this question until I realized that the question had an inbuilt flaw. It assumes that being and thinking differently is a weakness. The only reason we have computers, spacecraft, medicine, poetry, art, and yes, even video games is because individuals were able to simulate new abstract realities in their minds and share them with the rest of us. We need people to be willing to see differently in order for us to progress and survive as society. And we need to be open to these new ways of seeing. And it is this spirit that motivated me to create Senna's story and share it with you. So I was wrong on one point that uh, that video was pretty cool. Um, I was wrong that the video, you know, I thought it was going to give a little bit of insight into what the game was going to, you know, kind of go into in the second um, with the sequel, but it was more about like the creation of it and just kind of like the research that went into it and all that stuff, which was pretty mind blowing to see. Um, I think I actually saw that before. Um, you know, I think Ninja Theory had it on their own channel. Um, when they were making the game or like when they were close to releasing it but just kind of going back to it after I played the game um, was really